Thank you very much and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, sh I, should, I should confess that I come, I come here just, e just as eager to learn from all the experiences gathered here at the uh, Deutsche Präventionstag. Um, I, uh, I, uh, it's a great honor to be here, and, and uh, I, sh I should make some, some, it's not disclaimers really, but ju just trying to set, set the scene correctly. I will be making frequent references to state agencies in Sweden <clears throat> with the understanding naturally that it m implies something completely different than state agencies in Germany, since we do not have a federal level. It's one state and that's all there is. Um, I should also say that uh, you're absolutely correct. The Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention was created in the mid-70s in Sweden. And uh, it is a government agency uh, under the Ministry of Justice. And it has, it has evolved during those 40 years. Uh, it, is no, it, it is no longer a council, for instance. Uh, it, it's, it's just uh, one director general. That's, uh, that's all there is. Uh, and uh, heading the agency. We have added to our repertoire also so that we are doing uh, many more things than crime prevention at the moment. Uh, we are the holder of the official crime statistics for the entire Swedish criminal system. Uh, we're also a research institution uh, and uh, we do evaluations of legislative reforms of uh, methodological uh, operational methodological changes within police and the judiciary, for instance. And we organize the Stockholm Symposium on, on criminology uh, in the month of June every year. Uh, I'd like to s share some experiences from the Swedish model for crime prevention with you. Uh, and when I do that, it's not because I, I plan to brag about uh, an uninterrupted chain of success. It's because, because it's not. Uh, there have been challenges. Nor do I plan to tell you that we have actually found the perfect do-it-yourself IKEA type of solution that, that, that works at least 95% of the times uh, until you run out of spares, and that we can all go home and emulate this. There is no panacea, as you no doubt have already guessed. Uh, what I plan to do is rather to describe some milestones of, in Swedish crime prevention policy, some hard-earned, even sometimes painful experiences from trying to prevent something that is hard to measure uh, using ever-decreasing resources in an age characterized by new public management theory which, as you know, will in some instances mean the abdication of direct political influence in many spheres of societal affairs. affairs. I will also uh, give you examples. This is the disposition that I try to follow. Uh, how this local crime prevention has developed, some examples, some future challenges. I will leave these slides behind, so I'll, I'll spare the links for the last page. There'll be some pop-ups, I think, of them, some examples that will cover an entire page uh, in this presentation. Now, a few starting points. Uh, in the 1990s, which is where uh, I start measuring this development from, uh, there had been many grassroots organizations started in Sweden that had specific goals to prevent crime. There were young women's uh, crisis hotlines. Uh, there were shelter organizations, very much inspired by the German experiences of, of uh, Mädchenhaus uh, that sprung up uh, approximately over 100 such Mädchenhäuser uh, in the years that followed all over Sweden. Uh, but there were other organizations too trying to assist f uh, convicted criminals' reintegration in society, etc., etc. The, the government or the cabinet itself uh, presented a crime prevention strategy uh, capturing all this interest from, social, uh, from, from, from civil society. 
that uh, was termed our collective responsibility. Now, uh, this should be seen as a natural development uh, due to the interest of grassroots organizations, and it's based upon the idea that most of these program problems, or if not all of them, are local, therefore the solutions should be sought locally. And it focuses on everyday crimes, uh, such as theft, vandalism, and violence against women. Uh, it suggests strong, uh, strong cooperation uh, between police, social services, schools, local nonprofit organizations. And it had a clear ambition of involving citizens at grassroots level. But you will note that uh, the timing of this strategy also coincides, as I just mentioned, with the real formation of new public management. Uh, so if, if you, you could also say that it's, it's the starting point of a development of government that was going to, uh, government starting to behave in a different way than it had previously done, namely by fewer direct interventions and instead offering frameworks to societal actors such as local actors or uh, NGOs to shoulder some of the responsibilities within that framework. Uh, it also coincides with changes, uh, strategic changes in the ways uh, in which Swedish police uh, works. And uh, I'd like to just show you these three phases I'm sure you can divide them into different phases, but for the purposes of crime prevention, this, this makes sense. Um, if we describe the, the way that crime prevention had been integrated in Swedish police work bef prior to 1994, I would, uh, I would describe it as a specialist era, or if you will, it required a, uh, a firebrand type of individual that actually had the the, the enthusiasm required to engage in uh, crime prevention projects. It was not integrated really into the mainstream of, of policing affairs. Uh, phase two, uh, starting approximately at the same time as local crime prevention was encouraged by the government, spans uh, over the, the following decade and uh, is Typically, typically described as problem-oriented policing. Now, this is a period where there is a conscious effort of integrating more crime prevention and preventive work in general, instead of just uh, the, the, the plain law enforcement uh, type of work that police also is naturally entrusted with. The definition of what is crime prevention became wider during this period. And there was also a greater requirement for knowledge-based uh, methods. What works when we are doing crime prevention uh, efforts from the side of the police? The third period, which is what we are currently in, uh, the current phase, uh, is uh, intelligence-led policing. Um, doesn't differ radically from problem-oriented policing, but it is a, uh, when relying heavily upon intelligence, or criminal intelligence, means that this will be a method of working that works well on the law enforcement side, whereas on, on, the, uh, on the crime prevention side, you will have to uh, devise other methods than perhaps intelligence-led uh, policing. The definition used uh, currently uh, is, is something that, that is even wider than what we had under phase two. And, and critics will say that, that uh, basically all police work can be defined as crime preventive. Uh, and that is naturally a problem if you're trying to, to apply specific methods to it. But I'll come back to this in a little while. Now the police is not the only state or government actor uh, doing this in Sweden. Over the same period of time that I'm trying to capture in this presentation, uh, there are other state actors 
again initiated by the work of, uh, of NGOs, namely in the area of crime victim support. Um, there was, as a result of the, uh, of, of, of the uh, am ambition of these uh, NGOs, a, a, a stronger focus on victims' <coughs> issues, and in particular, again, on, on uh, the issue of women's shelters, for instance, in the, both in the 1980s and 90s. And two state authorities have been tasked with crime victim support. First of all, in 1994, the Swedish Crime Victim Compensation and Support Authority was created. Uh, and uh, a little more than a decade later, a National Center for Knowledge on Men's Violence Against Women was also created in order to support specific activities related to uh, the getting of victims of crime. As you will see, the issue of men's violence against women is a central part of Swedish crime prevention policy and it has been one of, the, one of the engines behind a lot of the activities that have later been transformed into general and broader uh, policies in, in Swedish uh, crime victim, uh, sorry, in cr Swedish crime prevention work. So let me pop out this question uh, and, and describe some of the main features of it. Uh, it's been a major part of crime prevention policies ever since the 90s. Uh, in the late 90s, a reform took place. Uh, translated literally, it means women's peace reform. Uh, a new, uh, two, at least two new crimes were defined. First of all, the crime, uh, gross violation of a woman's integrity. I'm translating it uh, freely in here. Uh, it, it is a crime that consists in repeated crimes by the same intimate partner, many big, small uh, crimes forming a pattern with intent to harm the victim's integrity. And in order to, uh, to be able to work in both combating and preventing this crime, completely new structures of interagency cooperation needed to be put in place, as well as uh, new functions concerning crime victim support. And uh, the, the government invested heavily in both uh, educating law enforcement, the judiciary, and also other organizations that were to be part of the machinery, so to say, that were uh, standing there to deliver once this new crime had been defined and was starting to, to, uh, uh, to be applied by the courts. The, uh, the implementation of this whole reform is still ongoing, and my own agency has done a preliminary evaluation in uh, 2010, uh, and, and uh, we have, have uh, noted that, among other things, we, we see a steady increase in the number of reported crimes, uh, not, uh, over, over the period that follows since uh, 1998, which gives us now 15 years of experience, and we see a, a, con a steady increase in the numbers of crimes pertaining to this newly uh, criminalized area over the period. So the knowledge about the existence of the crime has increased, and crimes are being reported. Uh, now, I should mention also some of you uh, have no doubt uh, both heard and possibly discussed the issue that uh, the law, uh, as was reformed in 1998, also criminalizes the purchase of sexual services rather than the sale of those services. Uh, and this, uh, this particular reform of the criminal law was also combined with education for the judiciary and increased funds for social support to, uh, to, uh, to prostitutes, helping them to leave prostitution and, and create a better life. In evaluating this law, uh, it has, has been seen as successful measures and police intelligence show that this particular piece of criminal uh, law has 
to a large extent, uh, helped authorities in preventing trafficking in human beings for sexual purposes uh, by suppressing the local demand. And, and uh, it appears that Sweden has become less interesting as a, a market for, uh, for trafficking as a result of that. Now, this has been a driving force behind, uh, as I mentioned, lots of funds were invested in the, uh, both education, training, awareness raising, reporting mechanisms, and in uh, bolstering uh, uh, local communities and local organizations in order to deal with victims, which has had spillover effects po on other parts of, of uh, local crime prevention. Now, the way that uh, local uh, crime prevention is, is governed in Sweden, I mentioned uh, the fact that we do not have the federal level, so uh, the state authorities that we have can govern local authorities uh, that enjoy quite a degree of autonomy by enacting laws in a general way, uh, and supervise their implementation. They can offer financial support, which is what I just mentioned happened in relation to specific crimes, and they can offer methodological support, which is what uh, my organization is doing. Now, the police uh, is currently in Sweden organized as a regionalized state authority with some centralized uh, functions, but it's divided into 21 counties currently. Um, Bro, uh, my agency is a state agency, a, a central state agency. We offer some financial, but mostly f methodological support to the judiciary and other authorities, including local authorities, uh, for crime prevention. Now, uh, as was mentioned in the introduction, the establishment of the National Council for Crime Prevention preceded the establishment of local councils for crime prevention in Sweden. It wasn't until 1996 when the government strategy, uh, the collective responsibility was, was formed, that there was a call to the 290, 91 back then, uh, uh, municipalities making up Sweden uh, for them to, to start organizing local councils. Uh, four years later, about half of them had created local councils, which is not bad in a period of four years. These local councils uh, generally consist of a local coordinator employed by the municipality, uh, gathering different functions around it. The police will be one, there will be other both state and local authorities joined in this council, uh, social services and uh, schools. Uh, it's around this time that my agency, uh, which I will henceforth use the, use the Swedish acronym for, uh, is, uh, creates a unit in order to support this development at local level. Uh, and uh, a speci special unit is created within my agency tasked to spread the knowledge of preventive methods to support financially local councils and projects there and increase the no knowledge of what works by evaluating different projects undertaken by the local councils. Uh, in the early years, the, this unit at, at Bro uh, distributed uh, amounts of financial support, uh, as well as methodological, in order to facilitate the start-up of these local councils. Once the councils had been set up, we shifted the mode to more deliver the methodological support that they needed in order to continue and to develop and, and sharpen their tools, so to speak. Today, the unit's primary, primary target group is local crime prevention coordinators and specialists and local decision makers inside the judiciary and uh, local authorities that cooperate together with the judiciary. Um, in four years ago, 
88%, or almost nine out, of, nine out of 10 of all the municipalities and city districts had a local council. And we've been doing studies on these, uh, these councils at, uh, two, uh, at least two intervals. First in 2005, to uh, sort of measure their development. What had, uh, what had this amounted to? Now, the first, first study we undertook uh, naturally noted that they had all grown. Uh, they had grown in numbers, but they also grown in size. That is to say, more and more functions locally had been integrated into these councils. Uh, the level of activity had increased in several of the councils. And uh, they were more and more often chaired by political or official leadership uh, in the local authority. That is to say, the, uh, it was no longer the, it, it did not have a, a volunteer character anymore. It was more integrated into the activities of the commune or, or, or uh, city itself. Uh, police uh, are the absolute most common uh, member of, of all the councils. It's hard to find a council where the police is not represented. <clears throat> now, uh, according to the same studies, uh, if you look at the type of issues that these studies, uh, that these councils have been focusing their deliberations upon, uh, we can see that they are commonly focusing on issues such as alcohol, drug prevention, youth at risk, crime prevention in schools, and general measures of safety and security. In uh, the latest study we did, we, we could also see that some of the methods uh, that, that, that were being promoted in, uh, in more than half of the, or close to half of, uh, more than half of the councils, uh, were promoting the me methods of camera surveillance designing outdoors and street lightning, lighting and uh, the methods of organizing neighborhood watch and neighborhood security surveys, which is a method I will be explaining in more detail in just a little while. The two studies we made in, uh, in, in uh, last decade, um, 2006 and 2009, try to capture some of the success factors in the local councils uh, up until that moment. And one of the crucials, crucial sine qua nons for a successful local council was, of course, that they had support from their, uh, their, their leadership. If there was not support uh, from the municipality itself, then it would have very little chances of, of uh, delivering success. Not, not only in individual projects, but also uh, the, the, the balance within the council itself, if it is headed by a person from a local, uh, a local uh, authority and has a strong participation of uh, local representatives of a regional police force uh, with, with resources for uh, crime-related activities that far outweigh what, what the municipality can do, then uh, that is not a, a, a recipe for success. Um, we could also see that uh, there was more and more, uh, we, we were feeding our methodological support into an, uh, a, a, a hungry market, so to speak, with the more methodological support we were able to deliver from uh, my agency, the more the demand uh, seemed to be, be, be growing in the, in the local councils, which was only very encouraging. Uh, we did also try to strengthen the qualitative level of our uh, relations with the local councils by insisting on their activities being evaluated by us. So we would deliver sometimes financial support, sometimes methodological for a specific project to be undertaken by local councils, but also saying that by the end of this project, we will be 
uh, we would like to see a thorough evaluation of the work that you have been carrying out to see that it was, whether it was effective and whether there were results in that project that could be uh, uh, disseminated to other local councils. Um, in, uh, we, were, we strengthened this uh, activity in 2008 by, by uh, also including research-based methods uh, available and useful for local stakeholders. A significant, a significant uh, element in local cooperation uh, started in 2008 when uh, the uh, National Police Organization, as I mentioned, the local authorities are, enjoy large degrees of political autonomy under the Constitution. So the, the, the central government cannot, cannot instruct them, uh, whereas the police forces can be instructed by the government. And they were encouraged to enter local cooperation agreements with uh, local authorities for the purposes of uh, crime prevention. Now, in reality, this translated into all the local municipalities that had uh, local councils sitting down together with the regional representatives of the Swedish police and uh, negotiating an agreement, applying no locally in our community on what issues shall we be cooperating? What is, what is really a problem here in community X? And how do we best divide the labor between ourselves? What shall be the priorities for the next year, for instance? Uh, uh, and my agency was entrusted to develop a model agreement to be used between police and uh, municipal authorities and also we developed a handbook for how to carry out this type of, of, uh, of cooperation. This model of cooperating police, local authorities, is based on, on two different layers. First of all, uh, it tries to structure crime prevention work. And the second layer is to do, it, to do the structured work in cooperation also with other actors than just the police and and uh, the local authorities. In order to structure crime prevention, we suggested five, uh, five steps. First of all, uh, mapping the local problems. And they will look different but, uh, depending upon if you are a small, uh, some, some of the municipalities up north in Sweden will be of the geographical size of Belgium, but have perhaps 50,000 inhabitants. Their, their problems will be so much different than if the municipality is one of the uh, many different municipalities making up metropolitan Stockholm, naturally. So the mapping exercise was crucial in order to sort of get a, get a, get, get a grip of the problems. Second step, defining what problems were. Uh, thirdly, analyze causes to the problems. Fourth, choose the appropriate measures to, uh, that were available in this cooperation and uh, create mechanisms for following up the cooperation. Uh, that way, crime prevention was structured in, in, in between police and local authorities. The second layer, as I mentioned, is to structure the cooperation itself, according to our handbook. Um, which follows uh, for any organization participating in the local uh, council's work and in the local agreement between police and municipality uh, to first of all uh, be prepared to initiate this cooperation and secondly to prepare one's organization for this type of cooperation. Uh, one would not like to have the situation where the person who is assigned to the local council is carrying out the crime prevention task as perhaps 10% of his or her uh, full-time job, whereas other partners cooperating for the same purposes are, are, are matching this cooperation in, in an entirely different proportion. 
Um, third third uh, point in the, in the cooperation, to prepare uh, and create a common understanding of the problems that the cooperation is, is uh, going to deal with, and fourth, to take the measures as described. Uh, this is a sometimes long process, but uh, using the handbook, uh, many of the councils that we, that we uh, evaluated reported that uh, they, they had, thanks to the handbook, been able to devote a lot of time to the cooperation and, it, and uh, to the preparation of the cooperation and that it, it was worth their while. Uh, and and uh, it is perhaps uh, an occasion where one would quote Abraham Lincoln, who I believe said that if he had eight hours to cut down a tree, he would use the first six hours to sharpen the ax. Um, about 85% of the 200 and now 290 municipalities in Sweden have signed cooperation agreements with the police. 85%. So most of the municipalities will have local councils and most of them will have cooperation agreements with the police. Uh, and when we uh, recently evaluated the results of the cooperation agreements themselves, we could see that they have led to improvements and that uh, the partners are working problem-oriented. But uh, it also shows that the cooperation uh, is, work, is focused on the issues that they possibly would be cooperating on anyway, even if they did not have the uh, cooperation agreement, rather than new issues. So once the cooperation agreement is set, it has a, a uh, uh, you can say that it, it, it captures cooperation at a particular point in time. What is perhaps needed to build into it is review clauses in order to add new problems as they come along. Um, it's difficult for those participating in this cooperation to analyze causes of problems and to choose me measures. Often this will be given what, what measures are available to them in this, in the, in this cooperation. Now, if you look at all this, this 20 year period, you can, you can see that what, the first trend worth noticing is, is that we have developed local crime prevention from individual projects here and there into processes. There are processes available and fora for cooperation in most of the municipalities of the country. Uh, you can, uh, I've, I've tried to depict the two different phases. First of all, the first decade consisting in establishing the local councils and uh, encouraging and cultivating their work by providing methodological support. And the second phase that we are currently in or seeing the end of uh, is an increasingly structured and long-term strategic work where the police, the commitment from the police is also manifested through these cooperation agreements. Now, uh, another trend that can be observed over this uh, over this uh, two-decade period is that uh, there has been an increasing demand for evidence-based methods, uh, and, and uh, which you naturally can see as the, the end of one scale where the other end of the scale is experience-based uh, methods. Um, and and uh, uh, looking at how the local councils that my agency is in touch with uh, evaluate this is that they, uh, they are, they are uh, pleased with an increasing amount of evidence-based uh, methodological support for many reasons. One is, of course, that it lends a legitimacy to the work that they are, is being carried, carried out locally. Uh, and uh, it is often a requirement in order to seek funds from other sources than, than, uh, than those available. 
Uh, if th there is also uh, sometimes a hesitation uh, of, of uh, going only in the direction of evidence-based method methods in the local councils as it is felt that they, uh, they would exclude many smaller and promising new methods that haven't been evidence-based yet. And perhaps finding a middle ground here is uh, a useful approach, and that is something that another Swedish government agency, namely the National Board of Health and Welfare, has developed when they are suggesting that evidence-based means the best currently available knowledge. I'm not sure everyone would, uh, would, would uh, use the same, uh, the same definition of that. But uh, let me do a pop-up from another national government agency, namely the National Board of Housing, Building and Planning. Now this is a, an agency that has published several reports over the years on physical, uh, the physical prevention of crime through uh, building uh, measures. Uh, one of the things that this agency in its report has stressed is the importance of citizen dialogue. Uh, the dialogue directly with the persons concerned, the inhabitants of a particular block, uh, the businessmen, the police, the housing associations, and others who are active in a particular area. They are the ones that are best knowledgeable about the local problems and the solutions to them, it is argued. In uh, uh, five years ago, the board was given a tasked by the government to strengthen safety in urban environments and to do that from a gender perspective. And this they did through carrying out workshops, regional, regional conferences, they distributed funding for projects and created handbook, handbooks on neighbor, neighborhood security surveys. Uh, and although they have been advocating neighborhood watch as well, which I believe is a well-known feature. But let me just mention that before I go into the neighborhood security survey. Um, uh, my agency has developed the, the method used by the board in uh, promoting neighborhood watches for public housing and multifamily houses. Uh, and uh, uh, although it has been around for, I'm sure, more than 40 years as, as an idea. But in 2008, we did a, a meta-analytical review that showed that this, this, would prob this is a very successful method. And we initiated a project to adapt and spread this no knowledge to local stakeholders. Formed a national steering committee consisting of BRO, the police, insurance companies, housing companies, landlords and tenants associations that developed and spread the method. Now, uh, if we look at two specific municipalities that have been evaluated using this method, the municipalities of Varberg and Halmstad, both on the Swedish west coast, we saw some quite significant decreases in everyday crime in these areas following the uh, introduction of neighborhood watches, as you can see from the figures here. When it comes to neighborhood security surveys, this is a method that was developed by the municipal authorities in Gothenburg. Uh, after that, several municipalities have produced their own guides on uh, neighborhood security surveys and my own agency has made a publication about the method. It is a way to get close to those, uh, or to, uh, to those who are living or working in the area and to get them involved in making the area more secure. Uh, and it's done through mutual exchange of uh, ideas and viewpoints. Uh, the dialogue between the residents and those responsible for uh, the project is just as important as the physical changes that the survey can lead to. Uh, the first uh, manual was produced in 2010, uh, and it includes actually two publications. It's a manual for those arranging the 
neighborhood security survey and a booklet for tenants and others who are participating in it. Uh, it is, uh, the best way I can describe it is a collective effort in identifying uh, weaknesses in the physical environment in the area concerned, the area you're living in, the area that you are conducting your business in, and also suggesting ways in which this could be approved. Um, I should also mention that at the latest two Stockholm Criminology Symposia that has been carried out, we have been conducting these types of uh, security surveys uh, in the form of seminars where the participants have act actually made a practical security survey of central Stockholm by uh, walking through the city <coughs> centre while carrying out a dialogue with persons they encounter along the way. Now, uh, that is perhaps not exactly according to the handbook, but uh, it, it is a very participatory process. Now, the publications on exactly how this is carried out uh, have been translated into uh, to English and can be downloaded from our website. This is a uh, part of the citizens' dialogue. Looking at future challenges for uh, local crime prevention. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, evaluations have shown that work, uh, the cooperation launched by the cooperation agreement between police and local authorities often, often focus on issues that the partners were already cooperating on rather than new issues. Um, and in those areas, uh, cooperation have, seem, seems to have been con <coughs> conducted fairly easily or without friction. Cooperation is more difficult in areas where uh, the goals or the methods of the different parties diverge, or where they may have the same ultimate goal but different methods or short-term goals. And this will be a future on how to build in the necessary mechanisms in these cooperation agreements uh, to permit such changes. To give you an example, the different interests of, of, of uh, police and social services in socially challenged areas. You have difficult tenants, for instance, that are, are uh, often the focus of police attention, while uh, social s services will have the task of, of uh, su supporting these, if they are offenders, in order to reintegrate. Pro preventing recidivism is another area where the interests of the different parties around the, the local cooperation ta table may diverge. Uh, and, and we have, we have need to, uh, to see that we are, the local cooperation will be flexible enough to cater uh, for the different interests of these groups. I mentioned also that there is a need to define um, in this phase of intelligence-led policing a need to define what police crime prevention is. Uh, we uh, currently use a definition of crime prevention that uh, nearly includes everything, every work that the police is doing, and by including everything, it is hard to say exactly what is the crime preventive part. It is patrolling with a police car being prepared for uh, immediate action? Should not something something happen? Is it uh, uh, being vigilant in order to be? Uh, to be able to act, or is just the physical presence being a part of crime prevention work? Um, the, to say that crime prevention is all police work that prevents crime makes the reasoning a bit circular. Um, an important future challenge is to find a workable definition of police crime prevention. And my agency, together with the National Police Board, are currently testing new, uh, a new definition uh, in, in order to capture the, the type of police work that has a primary, primary purpose to prevent crime, to set us aside from the reactive 
uh, law enforcement uh, work that the police is carrying out. And this, uh, this definition is currently being tested in a project in one county in Sweden. We also have a challenge that we can do very little uh, and that local authorities can do very little uh, about, namely a current trend of centralization of uh, authorities that have so far been regionalized. Now I mentioned that the Swedish police was organized into 21 different regional agencies, each given a mandate directly by the government and with a geographical coverage that coincides with the county. This is currently being reorganized into a number of seven or eight large regions in which the country will be uh, cut into for police purposes, making each region so much larger and containing so many more local authorities than was previously the case. Um, now, if uh, our experts tell us that uh, crime prevention must be based on local knowledge about problems. This presents us with a challenge. It presents us with a bureaucratic challenge too, namely the fact that all these cooperation agreements in uh, more than 200 municipalities have been uh, closed between the municipality and the regional police authority that will no longer be there in 2015. Uh, this could lead to increased problems where central leadership tells uh, uh, all agencies to focus in one and the same direction, regardless of local priorities and problems, and the lack of an intermediate level in police organization will, lack, will lead to new challenge, challenges when it comes to communication. Now, finally, some lessons learned uh, as we are standing at different crossroads, as you can hear, pondering where to go to next in some aspects. Although I, 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 uh, mm, uh, I assume that uh, our current focus on methodological support uh, is something that is going to uh, continue uh, as this is, is uh, uh, as this is what, it, what uh, our main contribution so far has been, been uh, our most successful contribution so far has been. And this is also where I would like to hear your suggestions. Now, uh, legitimacy is a success factor, as I mentioned earlier. If there is support from, from, the, uh, from the upper echelons of both the municipality itself and those that are participating in the local council, including the police, uh, th this is uh, uh, a facilitating uh, factor, a clear mandate and support from one's leadership. Uh, cooperation uh, is uh, absolutely necessary, uh, not only between municipalities and police, but also with public housing companies, <coughs> insurance companies, local authorities, local organizations, and the local citizens, of course. It must be based on long-term planning, uh, especially since we introduced the cooperation agreements between police and municip municipal authorities, we realized that we need to capture uh, the possibility uh, to, to, uh, to keep maintain this cooperation for, for a long time, but building into it also the factors that will permit us to refocus occasionally. Uh, we... Uh, uh, this is easier said than done. The participating organizations must dare to face the challenges and obstacles to cooperation, um, such as when priorities of different partners in the local council are diverging. Uh, preparation, I mentioned that and quoted Abraham Lincoln. I should add also that it's important to have fun, uh, and that is something we try to do when we invite local councils and local participants to methodological seminars at, at, uh, at, my, uh, at my agency. Now, uh, for small local authorities and indeed small national agencies and organizations such as my own, the challenges that uh, preventing crime may present us with may seem 
insurmountable at first and, and, and problems, that, that, that problems that has the potential of swallowing us all up one by one unless naturally uh, we get organized. This is meant to mean all the small fish organizing very much aligns, align uh, along the lines of the Swedish American labor union uh, legend Joe Hill, who uh, I believe said, don't complain, get organized. Um, and the next slide are the links to different uh, material I've been quoting throughout this presentation. Uh, and I will uh, we'll leave that behind uh, uh, together with these slides. Voila. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, at least uh, for myself, I can say I, I heard a lot that uh, a lot of the questions we, we also are asking in Germany and uh, uh, interestingly, uh, a lot of the answers that we also give in Germany in our discussion. So it's, it's interesting how, how we develop next to each other with the same questions and s somehow the same answers we, we've been searching for. But maybe here are some questions. Yes. Okay. We have a. We record this. We're recording, so we need a good tone. Um, so I have a question. You you pointed out that uh, police is uh, an, an, an actor in this field of prevention, uh, especially in the local field of prevention, and um, so I think there must any kind of education for prevention, um, maybe basic education or former education in this field. Um, especially for police or police officers, maybe especially or special prevention officers. Um, but um, on the other hand, uh, for the other actors in the wide field of institutions and private actors, uh, exists something of this, of this education? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, well, for for police, uh, there will be uh, elements of prevention in the general curricula for uh, police officials, at least recruited from a certain point in time. Uh, now, but that, that will be of a general nature, and it will follow the different phases I tried to depict here now. So if, if, it's, if you're recruited after 2005, it will focus on intelligence-led policing with this very wide definition of crime prevention. Um, now for other participants uh, of a local council, such as the local municipality, there you, will, you cannot be sure that there has been structured education in, in, in crime prevention, but more, uh, well, let's just say that it's not structured. Uh, most of the persons participating in this will have an interest in the field, so they will have uh, tried to gain what knowledge they feel they need, but there will always be a, 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 a learning by doing. But uh, when we try to reach out with methodological support, we do not, since there are 290 municipalities, we do not do that one by one. So we try to, to gather for perhaps um, well, right now in Stockholm, in the southern municipalities of Greater Stockholm, we are collecting four or five municipalities and their councils. Uh, methodological support for a specific issue, the prevention of uh, recidivism, persons who have been uh, released from institutions in this area. How can we cooperate locally? We have some methodological insights. We gather them all uh, in a big conference room in order to get as much uh, and that includes police and the, the local uh, penitentiary officials as well as the local authorities. So that's how we try to contribute to this enhancement of, of, of knowledge level. Uh, but that's it's about as structured as it gets. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have the microphone. I'm Caroline Davy from the Design Against Crime Solution Centre. Um, I'm interested on your thoughts in terms of the role of the citizen 
um, both in terms of defining what the problems are and in developing solutions. Um, I think it's often talked about the role of the citizen is very important in crime prevention, but one of the difficulties you have is that the problems may not uh, be experienced by a wider group of people. And unless they're actually properly researched, you don't know uh, where the problems lie in enough detail to actually be able to act on them. And the other issue is to actually generate a solution then you have to be able to do um, a substantial amount of research beforehand to know what might be required. Mm -hmm. And you can't simply rely on a citizen to say what is needed, otherwise it tends to be that they fall back on the things that are known about, so CCTV or more police on the streets, for instance. Mm -hmm. And in our work, we have done work with young people, and they've been able to design against crime, but they've actually gone through um, a 12-week process uh, where they've met every week and then they've also done research and then been helped to actually innovate and come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. No, I, I, I can only uh, echo the challenge that lies in trying to engage citizens. Now, as I mentioned, the, the, the method we have been advocating uh, is uh, in this neighborhood security survey um, where we have tried, and that's what our method recommends, to in include the views from as many different persons as possible that are, are uh, somehow implicated with the security level in a particular area. Uh, men and women, young and old, uh, disabled people, uh, businessmen, uh, the representatives of social services, etc. Uh, but but uh, but you're right. That there will be some favourite recipes uh, circulating that that uh, that you will have to relate to, uh, if possible, when structuring the dialogue. Uh, you, what what we try to do is to expand uh, the horizon, but uh, that 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 doesn't necessarily work on every individual. But I can only echo the 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 challenge that you that you depict we see it too okay one last question yeah <clears throat> hello my name is udo lange from the violence prevention through urban upgrading project in cape town in south africa <clears throat> i have only two simple questions the one is um, when you pointed out uh, the importance of the neighborhood security surveys and uh, the, the work with the neighborhood uh, watches in Gothenburg. Um, you mentioned that for organizational reasons, your agency was later on involved in a more prominent role. Uh, what was the reason for these organizational changes? What happened in Gothenburg really with, these under, with the conduction of these neighborhood security surveys in 2010? And the other question is simple. Can you please point out again uh, that slide you promised about the, the links, if possible. Ah, yes. Yeah, the <coughs> that's the second question. <laughs> now, um, concerning the organizational changes, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I'm, I'm trying to recall what I said. Uh, Ah, then, then I, I, uh, I, I did not do, do justice uh, in my presentation to the realities on the ground. But what I meant to say was that uh, the method was developed by the municipality of Gothenburg. The reason that we uh, stepped into the picture was in order to uh, uh, aggregate uh, or, or abstract the Gothenburg experiences in a way that would permit us to <coughs> present a handbook uh, relevant to all the municipalities. So that, uh, there were no other organizational difficulties than that. Okay, well, what, okay, we, we, we don't have time anymore, so maybe just one quick question. It's okay, I can speak. Okay, okay. Oh, I was just curious. You said you're not too happy about the 
decentralization uh, of the police in Sweden. What do you then do as an organization when the um, organization above you do something silly? Uh, are you sort of taking, talking loud about this? Or are you a, a sort of a polite uh, civil servant? Uh, you, you've, you've, since we are on record, you're forcing me to, to give you the official answer to that question. <laughs> No, Nat naturally, I, I will always try to be the polite civil servant. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I, I expressed unhappiness about the reorganization of the police. Uh, now I'm si sounding. Okay, I can do that. Uh, what I meant to say was that it presents us with, with challenges. Uh, and, and I think it presents, in particular, the local level that will have some more distance to go to its counterpart within the police organization, uh, uh, it presents that level with a, with a new challenge that it hasn't seen before. But we will naturally be there in order to, uh, to, uh, uh, to assist uh, in uh, everyone meeting that challenge. Well, let, let, let me, the, the reorganization of the police is the result of a bill presented to, to the government with a proposal suggesting that move from 21 authorities down to maybe seven or eight. Uh, before the government, before the, the cabinet takes a position on that uh, bill, all the agents, state agencies concerned are are asked what their professional opinion is about this uh, proposal. Now, in the, in, in the opinion expressed by my authority and by me, we pointed to these challenges. So we say, government, please be aware that there are some challenges built into the fact that we are moving uh, into larger administrative uh, entities here. And one of those challenges will be keeping the focus at the local level within larger and larger entities. So uh, we have made that uh, alert, and I'm sure that the, the government takes it to heart in, in, in doing the reorganization of the police. I'm absolutely okay. confident. Eric, thank you again for your um, Thank you. And I'll just